Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to the First United Methodist Church of Cedar Hill, Texas. I'm Dr. Kiva Green, and we're delighted to have you with us today to participate in this worship service. And as we begin this service, just a few announcements. We hope every day that you'll join us. Uh, hopefully you're joining us via Facebook Live right now. And if so, go ahead and put a little comment in there and let us know that you're watching. And if you're watching from somewhere other than the Cedar Hill area, then let us know where, where you're watching from. Um, also, throughout the week, we have different events going on. We have our, our daily Where Have You Seen God? 10 at 10. So every day at 10 o'clock, we have someone associated with our church who is sharing a short little devotion. And so I know you'll want to join us uh, with those every day on Facebook Live also. And it's a chance to share these messages with others. So be sure and push that share button, both for this service today and for those different Where Have You Seen God uh, daily ones at 10 at 10. Uh, just to kind of let you know what's going on this week, every Sunday and Wednesday evenings, we have a prayer time. Uh, it's a virtual prayer time on Zoom. And if you'd like to participate in that, then just go ahead and put a comment uh, in on Facebook or, or let us know at the church office that you would like to be involved in that. And we'll give you all the information to include you in those, those calls. Also, uh, we have a Sunday school class. Uh, that meets via Zoom, and they would be delighted to have you. So if you'd like to be a part of that, just let us know also. And I'm hoping that you might have caught our children's worship time at 945 each Sunday right before the service. Uh, Patty Brooks, our uh, director of children's ministry, does uh, that, and I'm sure you'll enjoy and learn something from that each time also. So we're delighted to have you just to let you know also this week uh, that this week on Thursday is the North Texas Giving Day. And our church supports lots of ministries, but particularly there are three that are supported through the North Texas Giving. Uh, that is our, our very own High Rise uh, Day Habilitation is supported through that, along with Cedar Hill Shares, our food pantry, and Bridges. And so I encourage you to be giving to those ministries, or if you'd like, you're welcome to give to the church and let us know that it is for North Texas Giving Day. And if you get those in by Wednesday, uh, then we will go ahead and be giving a, a group gift on Thursday to support those ministries. So let's continue now as we go on to the Lord and worship. Good morning. It's so good to see you here. Those that are here, it's great. The handbells are going to play later on in the service, so we have more people here than we normally do, and, and uh, Kiva's daughter's here, so we have some eyes to look at. Thank you very much for being here today. But we know that you are there, and even though we can't see your eyes, it is time to worship. So let's do that right now. for the call to worship. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Lord, just like the first disciples, you have called us to follow you. We know that we must recognize who you are and put our trust in you before we faithfully follow where you lead us. Touch our hearts, Lord, that our eyes might be open to your true identity and that we would give ourselves fully to you. Help us to trust you whenever you lead us and whatever you ask us to do. For we know that it is only in following you, Lord, that we might be fully who you created us to be. Amen. Please join me in prayer. O oh God, giver of all good gifts, you have given me life. 
You have bestowed upon me your love, and that love includes your plans for me. What am I to do? All life is a call and a response. I pray for grace to hear God's voice and a heart to respond. Guide me into the future so that I know who and whose I am. I shall listen to the voices of those witnesses who have lived before me. I shall listen to those who are here to give me guidance and encouragement, for it is clear that whatever plans you have for me, I will never journey alone. Lord, let me serve you with the gifts that you've given me. What am I to do? I am ready to listen. Amen. We're going to sing together three songs. One is Love, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. One is an old, old song, Bringing in the Sheaves, and I'm going to explain that a little bit. And then we're going to sing Jesus is All the World to Me. So join us today as we sing from your homes and from the congregation the, the first song, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. Love Divine, All Love's a picture on the screen of something that if it did, did anybody in here or uh, if at home listen to Glenda's 10 at 10 uh, on Monday uh, on Tuesday N Glenda's Gwenda's Gwenda's was on Monday and she spoke about this hymn this next hymn that we're going to sing and she said that when she was a little girl that she used to go into the church that was built on their property and they would just the kids would get the key and they'd go and they'd listen to they'd play the piano and they'd sing songs and Bringing in the Sheaves was one of the songs that she sang that they would sing together. And she didn't know what a sheave was, she said. And she thought that the word was bringing in the sheets. Now, that makes perfect sense to a kid, don't you think? And then someone else chimed in on the comments and said, you know, when I was little, I thought that it meant that they were saying bringing in the sheep. So I'm going to clear it up today. <laughs> it is bringing in the sheaves. And there's, the farmers at that time would gather up the grain and they would tie it together and they would leave it in the field and then someone would come and they would, they would 
bring in the sheaves. And so that is, it's talking about in Psalm, let me, tell, let me read the scripture for you. It's, it's Psalm 20, 126, 5 through 6, which says, Those who sow in tears shall reap with joy. And so we're going to sing this old song because I wanted everybody to know what it sounded like, and it's just a wonderful good old hymn. But it's the sheaves, and it's, free, it's the time of harvest when Jesus Christ brings his ones to him. Jesus is all the world to me. Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy. Cynthia. And now as we remember why we come to worship in the first place, as we join together in saying the affirmation of faith, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father. It is now our time to go to the Lord in prayer. And let me just point out that we do have a prayer shawl up here. Uh, we have a wonderful prayer shawl ministry uh, that we give shawls to those who are, are sick or grieving or going through a difficult time. 
and one of our very own Bob Tanner, uh, who's 98 years old and in fact was at Pearl Harbor, a uh, wonderful gentleman, and he's in the hospital right now. And so uh, we're keeping him in prayer. So our prayer shawl ministry will be giving him a prayer shawl. And so we'll cover this in lots of prayer as we're praying. So if you'll keep this in mind as we pray, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Glorious God, we just come before you now knowing that you are Lord God Almighty, knowing that we are just humans and we're so weak, yet you are our God. And when we finally realize who you truly are, it makes such a difference because we know that we can lean on you, that you are our Savior, that you can makes such a difference in our lives. And Lord, we need you, especially with everything that is going on in the world right now. Maybe that helps to open our eyes even more of how weak we are and how lack of control we are of everything that goes on. But we can turn to you and know that you see everything. You know everything and you have all power. And so Lord, we trust you. Right now, we bring before you those who are struggling, those who are sick and have illnesses and, and going through difficult times. We, we lift up families that may be having a tough time either with someone sick or grieving over a loss. Lord, there are those that with this economy are, are going through incredibly difficult financial times. And then there are all the political upheaval and, and racial tension and just the things going on in our nation and in our world. And so all those things, Lord, we lay at your feet, knowing that we can turn to you and that you are God. And that you have told us that if we will listen to you, that you will guide us in the way that we need to go. So we trust you completely. Lord, we give it all to you. As we join together and we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm, that we have an opportunity to give back to God out of the abundance that he has given us. And so let me encourage you, if you're one of those that you give your gifts and tithes, uh, buy a check, then you're welcome to go ahead and do that at this time and send it to post office box 187, Cedar Hill, Texas, 75106. Or you can use the PayPal app. Or if you're watching us via our website, there's a donate button. So you're welcome to use those to give back to the Lord. But let us all be faithful in doing that as we take this opportunity to worship through music.
and as we join now with our prayer of thanksgiving. Everything comes from you, O God. With praise and thanksgiving, we return to you what is yours. All that we are and all that we have and all that we will ever be is a trust from you. And so, in gratitude for what you have done for us and the multitude of blessings you have poured on us, we offer ourselves and all that we have in union with Christ's offering for us. To your honor and glory, Lord. Amen. Amen. What beautiful music. You know, when I was a teenager, I had a discussion with my mother one day. And I can't remember exactly what it was about. It was something that I wanted to do, and she was telling me I didn't have permi permission to do it. And I was saying, why? Why can't I? And she gave me several reasons why I couldn't, and I was still pushing of, of wanting to do it until she finally gave me those four words. Because I said so. And that ended the conversation. You know, it was partly because I loved her so much, but also because her 
parental authority. And so that was just the end of the conversation. You know, le- years later, I worked for Southwestern Bell Telephone, and we had a division manager that worked for our, our corporation. His name was Sid Phillips, and he was an amazing man. He was very powerful and well respected. And one of the reasons he was so well respected was because he had come up through the ranks and up to the executive level, but he knew every one of the technicians' jobs probably better than they knew them, and then he also knew the the executive level. And so he had earned people's respect. And in fact, there was a a saying that would go around, you'd often see it written places or people would, would say it, and it was S S. S, which stood for Sid said so, because people respected him, and if Sid said so, then, then we were going to do it that way, because he had authority. You know, if we're going to obey and follow someone, it's probably because we recognize who they are, and we recognize their ID, and we recognize their authority. But even with that, we have to decide that we're willing to trust and obey and follow. We are doing a sermon series entitled Encounters with Christ. And in it, we're going through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we're looking at different times where where Jesus interacted with various people. And hopefully, what we're learning is to understand more of who Jesus really is and also how we should respond to him. And throughout this sermon series, I also want to just teach you a little bit more about the Bible and about that culture as we go through things. Last week, we were looking at uh, the story of when Jesus called the first disciples, and we looked at it from the Gospel of Mark. And this week, we're going to be looking at the Gospel of Luke, the similar story, and what it tells us. And as I reminded you last week, you know, all four authors are telling the same story. They're just telling it from different perspectives. So when you study all of them, you're able to pull in more and more information. So if you'll grab your Bibles and turn to the Gospel of Luke, to the fifth chapter. And it begins by talking about that Jesus is on the shore of Gennesaret, Uh, the Lake of Gennesaret, and we often call that the Sea of Galilee, Uh, but it went by a couple different names, and Jesus is there, and there is a crowd that's gathered because they have heard that he teaches with authority, and they've also heard that he does miracles, and so they're there to hear the word of God and to see what Jesus will do, and as this crowd is all around him, It says that Jesus is on the edge of the shore, and he notices that there are two boats out there where the fishermen have been fishing all night, and and they're washing their nets, and those boats are there. And it talks about Jesus getting into the boat belonging to Simon and asking Simon to push out from the shore just a little bit so that he can sit in the boat and teach. And it's because he's there that he's a little bit away from the crowd that he can speak to the multitude that is up on the hills. But it also helps because of the water that his voice carries up to them. Now, I I have to stop for just a moment and and let you know I'm amazed with this phenomena of how our, our voice and sound carries off the water. And every time I read that story... I think about something that happened when I was a little girl. Our, our family would go out and we would go water skiing. We'd go out to the lake and go water skiing. And when I was water skiing behind the boat, all I could hear was the boat engine. It was really loud. And I figured that's all my family or anybody else could hear too was the boat engine. So when I was water skiing, I decided I would sing. And so every time I'd get back there to water ski, I would just sing as I'm water skiing. And my favorite song was Jesus Loves Me. And I would sing as loud as I possibly could. And there's something about water, and maybe it's like singing in the shower, you know, that, that it just sounds so good. So I would sing loudly, and, and it was great. Until one day, 
We pulled up to a dock to fill up our boat with gas, and I went running into the little store to buy a candy bar, and when I was in there, the clerk said, oh, look, it's the Jesus Loves Me girl. And he said, every time you're out there water skiing on the lake, we love hearing you sing. So all of a sudden, I realized how that sound really carries. Now, I don't think that Jesus had gone water skiing, and that's how he knew that the sound carried. But he certainly used that technique to carry his message up to the crowd. Now, I want to pause it right there, and I want to flip to the, to the Gospel of John to teach you just a little something else. In the Gospel of John, when it's talking about the disciples first meeting Jesus, for some of them, for Andrew, he was actually a disciple under John the Baptist. And John the Baptist had pointed out Jesus and said, look, the Lamb of God, and Andrew ended up following him. And in the first chapter of the Gospel of John, it tells about this, verses 35 through 42. And it tells that Andrew followed Jesus, talked to him, and after he met Jesus, then I love it that it says the first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon. You know, it was such good news, he wanted to make sure he shared it. And so he brought Simon to meet Jesus. But before he had even introduced Simon to Jesus, then hear these words from verse 42. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. Now Cephas was the Aramaic name and Peter is the Greek name, but both of those mean rock. And let me just point out, I've mentioned to you before that names in the Bible are very important. But you also need to understand that it takes someone with authority to be able to name someone. Think about a parent naming a child. The parent really has authority. And actually in Genesis, in the second chapter, where it talks about Adam naming the animals, it's because God gave him authority to name all the animals. But also throughout the Bible, where we see people renamed is because someone had authority to rename them. And it's probably because something happened. Something happened to change them from who they were to who they are now. So you think about God renaming Abram to Abraham or Sarah to Sarah or Jacob changed to Israel or in the New Testament Saul changed to Paul and even you know often it was God changing their names but even in the case of the exiles when they were taken to Babylonia that uh, that their names were changed if you look in the first chapter of Daniel and it talks about Daniel and his friends and every name has meanings and in fact if a name ends in el or I-A-H, it refers to God. And so Daniel and his three friends, Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, all had their names changed because then they were under the authority of the, the people in Babylon. And so they changed their names. Daniel's name was changed to Belshazzar. And we don't hear about Hananiah and Michelle and Azariah, because what we know them best as is uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, because their names were changed. So in the same way, because of Simon, his name was changed by, by Jesus to Peter or Cephas. And remember when it says it, uh, when Jesus says your name, it says your name will be uh, Cephas or Peter. So now we go back and we see back to Luke and we see Jesus in the boat and he's teaching. And these fishermen have been washing their nets and cleaning up from fishing the night before. And you can imagine Jesus sitting in that boat and teaching. And those fishermen are listening intently to everything that Jesus is saying. And then it says that, that Jesus finished speaking to the crowd 
And he turns to Simon and says, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Now, Peter, excuse me, Simon says, Master, so he recognizes who Jesus is, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. Now, let me translate that for you. Fishing via nets worked when you were doing it at nighttime. But with the morning sun coming in, it didn't work as well. And if they had not caught fish all night, then it was very unlikely that if they went back out, that they would catch anything. And think also, you know, Jesus is a, a carpenter, a teacher. What does he know about fishing? You know, Simon's probably thinking, I know all about fishing, and this isn't a good time. He's, he would probably like to say, Jesus, could we just take a rain check on this? You know, because, you know, we're exhausted, we've already washed the nets, and, and, you know, this really isn't a good time to fish. We'll take you out some other time. But that's not what he says. Instead, even though he may think we, we haven't caught anything, he goes on to say, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. Because you say so. You know, he at least trusted Jesus enough because Jesus said it. Now, I wonder if he really thought what would happen. And you know, when he said, I mean, he had, had called him master, and he was willing to go back out there. But we kind of have a feeling that he had no idea that it would be like what happened. Because his reaction is so strong when they let down the nets, and it comes up with this huge, huge catch. And it's like everything changed the moment those nets came up, and he saw that catch. Because it was so many fish. In fact, Scripture says that it was such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. And so they, they yelled at their, their partners, James and John, to bring the other boat out there, and that boat came out, and they filled both boats, and it even says that when they did that, they were so full, they began to sink. There were so many fish, and it's in that moment that Simon really recognizes who Jesus is. Because Simon may have fished for a long time, but he had never seen anything like this. And it's when this happened, this is the turning point. In fact, before verse 8, he is only called Simon. But this is the turning point for him because beginning with verse 8, it says, Simon Peter saw this. He fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. That was the turning point for him. And that was the turning point where he became Peter also. You know, for the, us too, you know, when we recognize who Jesus really is, it's, it's not only recognizing who he is, but at that moment, we also recognize who we are. And we recognize that we're not worthy. And we see that throughout, throughout the Bible. People that worshiped God and thought they knew God, but then when they realized they were standing in the presence of God, then it struck them of the fact, I'm not worthy to be here. I mean, we see that in Job, with Job chapter 42, verse 5 and 6. Job says, my ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. And it's the same thing for Isaiah, Isaiah in chapter 6, verse 5 says, Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. It's recognizing who God really is. And it should be the same for us when we really recognize who Jesus is. I mean, we may have heard about him all of our lives. We may say we worship him, but it's not until we really 
know who he is, that it really opens our eyes and changes everything. And listen closely to this, because we cannot call Jesus our Savior until we first recognize that we need to be saved. Do you hear that? Jesus can't be our Savior until we first recognize that we need to be saved, because before that, we think we're okay. We think, I'm, I'm pretty good. And it's not until we really see that we're not worthy that we can acknowledge that Jesus can save us and that we cannot do it ourselves. And it is in that moment that we can fully trust who Jesus is and say yes to him. And that's the time that makes such a difference. And for Simon, when he realized that, he fell before Jesus, knowing he wasn't worthy. But that's also the time when all of a sudden he was able to be used by Jesus. Because Jesus answers him and says, don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. Because now he's qualified to be used by Jesus. And Jesus is inviting him to something bigger than he could have ever done before. And notice, if he had not, you know, been obedient and pushing out and and doing what Jesus asked him before he would have never gotten to this point he would have never seen these blessings but he would have never been able to be used by Jesus and it's the same thing for us it's when we're obedient it's when we're willing to be used by by Jesus by God that that we receive those blessings that we experience him more than we ever had before and are we willing to be obedient, to, to do what he calls us to do, to, to come, to go, to, to give, to, to stand up for what's right, to share our faith, to invite, to forgive, to love, to do everything that we are called to do. And it's only when we really recognize who Jesus is that we we really step out to do those things. And before that point, we can make excuses. You know, but at least Simon Peter didn't make an excuse of, of going back out there. He, he went ahead and obeyed. He said, because you say so. And then he trusted and he obeyed. You know, the, the last scripture in this passage says that they pulled up their boats and pulled him up on the shore and left everything and followed Jesus. Because it's at that moment that they realized that the greatest thing that they could do was not catching fish, but to let go of their lives as they knew it and to really follow Jesus. So what about you? Are you willing to trust and obey and follow and if you truly are a follower of Jesus, then you know that he has authority over your life. And so you follow because he says so. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, you alone are Lord God Almighty. And it's not until we really, really recognize that, not just say the words, not just think that we know but to really see you for who you are it's in that moment that we know who we are in relationship and it's at that moment that we can trust you and be obedient to you and follow wherever you lead us lord may we trust and may we obey to your glory amen amen trust Sometimes it's a hard word to hear. When you trust someone, you know that they have your best in mind. And God does. Jesus does. He, he's someone that we can trust. He's never let us down before. So let's sing this song. And as we think about him, the trust that we have in him and that we can obey because we know he has our best in mind. Trust and obey. the 
And as we close with the benediction, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever and ever. Amen.